In this video, I talk about the five cards that you need to hold on to. And if you don't have copies of this card, make sure you get them now. Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're talking about the five best cards that I think you should pick up right now. And if you don't have them, you gotta get them quick. So that being said, let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into it, starting with number one. Oh, and we're trying to reach 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Can we do it? With that being said, let's get straight into it. Coming in at number one is a card I don't think anyone is surprised about. It's Sprite Elf. And as an ultra, it's starting to shoot up to the 15 to 20 pound region. And I'm sure it's similar in the US currency. It enables the gigantic Sprite. But more importantly, he has interaction with the opponent's turn, including summoning the tournament's Merle, which triggers a mill, which triggers a fusion summon. Now, I'm not sure if post Dark and Blast uh, turn players are going to main this card, but what I do know is it's generic and it's splashable in any deck and a card that has protection as well, let's not forget about that, which just makes this card even more annoying to deal with. Just imagine, you have Toad and a Griffin under its arrows, meaning they can't even be targeted. That's crazy. And also, it's a 3 of in the sprite deck and a must if you're playing pure sprites or any version of sprites. If you're trying to take sprite to the competitive scene, because Dark and Blast is giving us new support, I highly recommend picking up this card now. I think you guys are gonna love this one. This is Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherry. It's one of the funniest cards to resolve in Yu-Gi-Oh. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, all you have to do is reveal it, reveal a extra deck monster in your extra deck, look at your opponent's entire extra deck, and banish all the copies. Now, this card wasn't that popular in the branded format simply because Lubellion shuffles materials in. However, against Sprite, hit the Elf. Against Tournament, hit the Kalos. It's arguably a extremely broken card. And for that reason, while it's reprinted and it's quite cheap, I think everyone should get a playset as soon as they can. Coming at number three is a card I really despise, but it's good that it's in the meta because it gives other decks a chance to play around other things and also makes going second a more viable strategy because historically in Yu-Gi-Oh, if you go first, that just means you win the game. And the third card is, of course, Garura, Wings of Resonant Life. I'm just checking his name. Got a crazy effect, which people seem to forget. And more importantly, it's literally a super polymerization target using two monsters of the same attribute and type. Now, against uh, pure archetype decks, it's really easy to resolve. Against Sprite, hit the Sprite Red, hit the Sprite Elf, you're loving it. Against Tournament, you can do a lot of cards. You can fuse up the Tournament Kit, Kalos, and any Aqua Monster. And what I personally always say is, in the Tournament Mirror Match, whoever has the craziest Super Poly wins the game. And I think Gorilla just enables that craziness. Also, Tournament players use it to bridge into cards like the Dragon Stepelia, and for that reason alone, because that card is so important, I think Gorilla is one of the best cards to pick up right now, and clearly is showing it in its price. Yeah, debuting as one of the first Link 5s in the game, Underworld has a huge reputation for being one of the scariest cards. Sky Strikers were known to use it early on, but now that it's been reprinted, I really think every player should own at least one copy, because you never know when you're gonna spam a lot of bodies on the board, IPL for example, and then just easily summon the Underworld on the opponent's turn. As far as what the card does, it's insane. Having a card in your extra deck that can out anything in the game means you never have to worry about cards like the IP Avermax and other cards like that. At arrival, Ignista comes to mind. Um, this card can fuse with the opponent's field using one monster. If you have an IP setup, you can actually IP on the opponent's turn, get rid of their monster that might be a setup, and bring out the Underworld. And Underworld's effect is crazy, it's got like a million effects. On summon, negates the opponent's whole field, which is just disgusting, and it's a permanent negation too, don't forget that. But also, it can negate a effect that would special summon monster from the grave, which is pretty nice, because in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, everyone does that. And then, its other effect, which makes it really troublesome at 3k attack, is the fact you can't affect it unless you specifically target it. Cards like Dark Hole, Rageki, Lightning Storm, they don't do anything to this card. However, I've noticed when dueling with this card, you know, obviously there are some setbacks, something like Collide or Heart does eat, deal with this card. But again, if you play Underworld correctly, I think it can win the game very easily. And I like to think people who mastered this card are just gonna have a high win rate overall. And the final card, coming in at number five, of course, my favorite card. I'll even show some gameplay as I'm talking. Rikaru Divine Carnet is incredible. This card is, I wanna say, quite cheap and quite underrated. It's a card that is incredibly powerful for a specific format. Right now, the tournament format, a lot of cards tend to dodge stuff, as in they get fused away. So Kurikara is not as potent, but in a format like the Sword Sword format, if we use an example, this card is insane. It would have been able to wipe the whole opponent's board after their negations, and then special summon the Baron from their graveyard, which is just disgusting, right? And remember, this card comes in at 1500, for every tribute to monster it gains 1500 attack. Unfortunately, the downside is it doesn't affect extra monsters on cards, 
but that's fine again it's very format dependent and going into the next format which is darkroom blast you've obviously seen the video on the screen you can tell just how potent this card is how effective it is it just means you can politely throw your opponent's cards into the graveyard summon this monster do some attacks, maybe OTK, and then in the end phase, steal their monster. I think Kurikara is going to be a huge sleeper card in the Darkwing Blast format and in the Photon Happen Over format when Shatrila or Kashitra becomes full power because the same kind of line of thinking also affects them. Coming in as a fire level one with 1500 attack, obviously as a Scarecrow player, all I'm thinking in my head is this is one of the best small word bridge targets we've ever seen and it synergizes with water enchanter of the temple which is 1500 attack and it synergizes with magician souls at level one so it just makes you think how effective this card is and i think in a going second strategy like scareclaw this card is a no-brainer okay so that's been the top five cards that i think you should hold on to now and if you don't have them try and get them as quick as possible some of the cards have been reprinted and that means they're quite cheap at the moment i'm looking at underworld and winter cherries but before i do close the video i want to give some honorable mentions some cards that, you know, looking at the mega tins, looking at the prices right now, I think Forbidden Droplets is a steal. What I always recommend in videos like this is whatever deck you're thinking of playing in the future, always do your research and find out what cards you need now. For example, with me, I'm thinking of building Rescue Ace, which is a really cool control style mechanic deck. For that reason, I'm picking up machine duplications if I can, and that's just what I'm planning to do. So guys, that was the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys are able to find some value in it. Let me know if any of these cards you already own or you recently picked up or you're probably stressing about needing to pick up now. I think all these cards are definitely the ones you wanna pick up now. And if you can, try and use them in your decks too. I think they're all effective in their own ways. Right now, I wanna say Winter Cherries, Underworld, Elf and Garura all have amazing applications. I'll put Garura probably at the top with Winter Cherries. And that being said, guys, thanks so much for watching. I will be in YCSU check, but I do have this video scheduled while I'm away. And with that being said, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.